Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm looking at a brand new game currently on Kickstarter called Rogue Angels. This is a brand new one from Sun Tazu Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly one to two hours to play, and it's a fully cooperative campaign adventure game. So in the game itself, you are going to be part of a crew that is traveling the galaxy, trying to bring peace to it, going on stealth missions and combat missions and all kinds of different things as you make your way through the campaign. You'll have to make tough decisions, and you'll be able to upgrade your character along the way, adding new abilities and upgrading your cards and adding new tactics and all kinds of different things, developing relationships with your fellow crew members, uncovering all kinds of different mysteries, and progressing the campaign in a choose-your-own-adventure aspect where you're going to be making tough decisions along the way. So in this video, I'm going to take you through some of the main features of the game and show you a sample turn to give you a good idea how this one plays to help you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay up to date on all the videos I release, also give that notification bell a ring and that'll let you know whenever I drop new videos. I do also want to point out before getting into this that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and look a lot better in the final production copy of the game. So let's head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. So let's start by taking a look at the characters that players can play as throughout the game. So each character is going to have its own dashboard that's going to list the name of that character on the top, its image, and the type of character it is, and then their personality diagram. Throughout the campaign, you're going to be able to upgrade these different tracks on there to gain tokens. And you'll be able to spend those tokens to activate abilities on your cards. And you'll be able to modify your cards with new abilities throughout the game, as I'll show you. Next, each character is going to have their own special unique ability and slots for additional ones that you'll be able to add throughout the campaign. Each character is going to have a number of focus slots that allow them to reroll dice by spending those focus points and a number of shields that will block most damage but not un shield damage that goes past shields. Each character is also going to have a track here for scars throughout the campaign as players are not as successful or fail missions they're going to have to mark off these scars that will have lasting impacts on their character. Each character is also going to have an activation token, so once you've used your character during the turn, you'll flip that over. Each character will also have a miniature, but in this prototype version, I have a standee. And then at the bottom of the character's card is their cooldown track. Throughout the game, as characters play cards into the different slots, they're going to place them in here based on the number where it can be placed in that slot, or if that slot, slot's already been taken, they can place it in slots above that slot. And then the end of each round, or each player turn, these are going to slide over one space. Any ones that slide off will go back to that player's hand. And each player will start the game with seven cards, two basic cards, and five unique cards to that particular player. And with these cards, they're also going to have spots at the bottom of the cards that throughout the campaign, you'll be able to modify them with new abilities. And then you can spend a token of that color to activate that ability when playing the card. So you'll be able to upgrade these along the game. On the other side of each player's card is a beginning side. So if you are new to the game, you can play with the beginning side that'll give you a breakdown of all the different things on that card. Each character is also going to have a dossier folder that is going to give you their origin story and is going to track a number of different things throughout the campaign. So first off, as we open up again, this is just a prototype. So some of these things are going to have additional things in them. So for example, with this one here, it tells you exactly what is going to be included in this folder that is not represented right now. So there's going to be a lot more things in here in the final version. And then finally, we have all the different stickers and these aren't stickers in this, but they will be stickers where you'll be able to modify some of those cards, adding these different effects to those cards and then gaining those tokens uh, throughout the campaign. And on the backside is going to be the relationships that that character has with other characters. And you'll be able to improve those things by doing different actions and doing different things throughout the campaign. Choices you make and decisions as you play through the campaign will improve or, or affect you in negative ways on those different team members where you can potentially have all kinds of interesting interactions with them. Throughout the game, players are going to take wounds, and this is going to be represented by the wounds deck. When a player takes one or more wounds, they're going to draw these, and there's going to be a number of different effects with these. First off, each wound is going to have a number in the top corner, and that's where you're going to need to place that on the character's cooldown track. If there's a card already in that spot, 
such as another wound card, then you have to place this card in a higher slot that's available. If there aren't any slots available that are higher than that, then the player is going to become unconscious. So with that, these cards are going to have a number of different effects. So when you draw the card, you're going to resolve the effect that's shown here. And then with the game itself, there's a number of different ways the game is going to scale, making it more challenging for players. So based on the number of players, games will scale also by the wounds. And so you can choose, certain players can also choose to play at a hard difficulty or an insane difficulty, which is going to add additional effects to these wound cards. Now this won't apply to all players, so if you have players that are new to the game, they could choose uh, an easier difficulty, and those players that are skilled with the game could try to bump it up and make it a little more challenging for themselves as they play through. So in situations where players are playing hard, there's going to be an ongoing effect. So as long as this is in the cooldown track, there's going to be an ongoing effect that, that will be resolved with some of them. Some of them won't have it at all. And then finally, for those players that want the ultimate challenge, there's also going to be effect when this is discarded from the cooldown track. So from there, let's take a look at some of the enemies you're going to be facing. And there's going to be a whole collection of different types of enemies that are going to be included in the game. And this is just a small assortment of them. So each enemy is going to have five different stats on its standee. The first one is going to be the enemy's range, then the amount of movement points that enemy has, the amount of damage that enemy deals, and if it has any shields, and finally the number of hit points that enemy has. And there's going to be a whole collection of different enemies, such as thugs or guards, enforcers and mechs, and as you can see, their stats can get really nasty. Enemies are also going to have an initiative and a color that there's going to be associated with them when they spawn. And in the prototype, the, you don't have this, but they will actually have little wheels that are going to go at the bottom that you'll be able to rotate to determine the or how, count the number of hit points that enemy has. And it'll also list the initiative numbers on that enemy as well. So you can keep track of those as you're going to see next in the enemy's behavior cards. Next, I want to talk about the EBCs, or the Enemy Behavior Cards, and there's going to be a whole deck of these included in the game. During missions, when you spawn enemies, they're going to tell you which cards to pull, and that'll be based on the card's name at the top. Some cards are going to have an ability or effect that'll be handled when that card is active, and then next you're going to have behaviors for the enemies, and this is going to be based on their initiative. So the lowest initiative enemy is going to activate and carry out these effects, then the next lowest initiative enemy will carry out these effects. And you're always going to start with the leftmost effect and then work your way over from there, reading from left to right. And these cards are double-sided, so once you have completed a card, when the enemies are ready to activate next, you're going to flip this card over to the yellow side, and then the yellow enemies will activate. So it's going to alternate from yellow to red, if there are both types of enemies out there. If there's only one type, say all yellow enemies, then you'll stay on the yellow side, or if there's all red enemies, you'll just stay on the red side. Next, I want to take a quick look at the campaign book. And again, for reference, this is just a prototype. And so some of the images will be a little rough in this and it's just printed paper. But in the full production copy, this is going to look beautiful. So from there, the campaign book is going to start off by giving you, setting the mood, telling you what's going on in the galaxy and giving you the somewhat of a big picture of things and what's going on. From there, you're going to dive into the missions. And each one of these is going to be labeled at the top and is going to give you a mission briefing, along with interactions with NPCs that are going to give you cutscenes and backstory about certain things. And then from there, you're going to have mission breaks at the, in different sections that are going to have different effects or things you have to carry out before proceeding. From there, then you'll move on and there's going to be different actions you must take or things that you'll have to carry out as you proceed through this. So really giving you numbers, different choices to make as you proceed through each one of the missions. Once you get to certain points, you'll jump over to the map book and it's going to give you different layout instructions for where to place all the different tokens, where you're going to start, where enemies are going to start, and the parameters for the mission, what things you must succeed in and how to work them, and the turn limitations based on the number of players, being two, three, or four players. And then you're going to continue on until you reach, reach the success or fail points and then it'll instruct you what to do next. So the last couple things I want to cover before getting into the sample turn are the map book and your ship. So in the actual game, the ship is actually going to be a small box that you'll be able to keep your save game in as well as modify throughout the game to improve your ship and add different features to it. Then you're also going to have the map book and this is where all your missions are going to take place. 
Again, this is just a prototype, but each one of the different pages on here is going to be a map that is going to have the layout for you. And then you'll be adding tokens to this map in different areas to meet whatever mission you're playing. And then at the bottom of the map is going to be the track that is going to track the number of turns that you'll have to complete whatever objective you're currently at, or different objectives you currently have. You'll have a compass down there to give you your directions and your maps number for the references and set up instructions in the campaign book. And there's going to be a whole collection of different environments with this as well. So flipping through a few of these, we have Looks like a different kind of space station warehouse section. We're going to have different planet points on here and all kinds of other things. I don't want to give away too much because I don't want to spoil too many things, but there's going to be all kinds of different locations you're going to be able to visit throughout your campaign. All right, so the last thing I want to do is take you through a sample turn action to give you a basic idea how this one plays. And in this one, I'm playing through the tutorial mission. So I've gotten through a couple of the different objectives at this point, and now I'm in combat. And I wanted to show you some of that and how that works. So with that being said, we're ready to move into it. So I have my two characters and I'm ready to begin my turn. Both of them have the activation token yet to be used. So I get to choose which one I'm going to activate. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start down here with my character over here. So during each one of your character's turns, you can perform two actions from a selection of three different actions. The first option is to play a card from your hand, placing it into one of your cooldown slots and carrying out the abilities on there. If there's a dice icon, then you're going to roll any, the number of dice that's listed and add those effects to the card. The other option you have is to increase your focus by up to two points, up to the maximum focus that you have. You can never go above that. The final option is to rest, which will allow you to move any cards in your cooldown one space to the left. Any cards that fall away are returned to your hand immediately. So getting into it, during her turn, she does have this guard here that's pretty nasty. He has one shield and four health. And so let's see what we got here. As my first action, she is a medic, so she could heal. Um, I do have a blaster pistol that can do two damage to an enemy within four spaces. And then I gain a focus back. But this one also does not have me rolling any dice. Uh, I have a hacking drone and a laser sniper, which sounds like it could be pretty good. So with this one, it's going to deal three damage that is unblockable. So it'll go right past his defense to an enemy within four to eight spaces. So I'm going to have to move first as I'm too close to him. If this is your first action this turn, deal four instead. All right, so I'm going to need to move first. So I'm going to do, I think, um, well, I can do this one. That's a two. If you end your action adjacent to an enemy, gain plus one to your next action this turn. Well, that's not going to happen. So I could do that and risk it, but I think I'm going to need to do the unpredictable move. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. That has to go in my number two slot as that's the requirement. Or I could go higher, but since my two is open, I'm going to go there. This one is going to have me rolling three dice. So let's see what I get. So I got a plus two. I got a plus one and I got a shield. So that would let me move three because I get either plus one or I can choose uh, the move action. And I'm gonna go ahead and spend one focus to reroll this one because the shield isn't gonna help me. Well, it could, but I really want to move. So there it is, there's another plus two. So the pluses will be added directly to the number in quotations, which is zero right now. So I can move up to five spaces. So I need to be four spaces away from him. So I could go one, two, three, four. I'm gonna be one, one, two, three, four, five. That would put me five spaces away from him. Or I can go one, two, three, four, five up here. And then I'm one, two, three, four, five. I'm five spaces away from there, but then that would put me close to those guys. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go in the corner here. So there's one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go over there as my first action. And from there, that is going, I'm going to go ahead and play this sniper. And this one is going to have me rolling two dice. And I'm going to deal three damage to an enemy within four to eight spaces. If this is your first action this turn, it's going to be four instead. So there's no way I can add additional damage to that by rolling the dice. 
So these are just going to do other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and carry that out. So I've got a plus one and a shield. So I'll go ahead and do the shield for that. And then I'm gonna spend a focus to reroll this one once and it gives me another shield. So that gets my shields back up and I'm gonna do three unblockable damage to him. So he is going to be down to one hit point and he still has his armor at this uh, that cannot be destroyed. And so I'm just going to keep track of that. Um, normally there's going to be a dial underneath there. All right, so that is the end of her turn. So at the end of her turn, all of her cards will move over as she is going to rest. And then it'll move into the enemy's turn. So at this point, he activated already as the enemy is activated when they came out. So now it's going to flip over to the yellow enemies to activate. And so this one is going to go for the number one guy. So he is going to be up here. And so he is going to carry out these. He's going to attack the nearest character, uh, which is going to be this guy. And he is one, two, three, four. He has got a range of four, so he can target him. And he's going to do one damage. I do have one defense. So I'm going to, or I'm going to, I have plenty of, of, of shields there. So then, and then last activated character. And then he's going to move towards that last activated character. So he's going to try to move towards her. So he's going to go one, two, and three over here. All right, so next, then this guy's going to go. He's going to move towards the nearest character. One, two, three. And then he is going to attack the nearest character. So he's going to do one more to the eradicator. All right, and that is the end of their turn and this will move down. Then it's going to go into my turn again to choose, and I forgot to flip that over to mark that she went, so now it's gonna go over to the Eradicator's turn. So now at this point, I know he's going to activate next, but if I kill him, then those guys are gonna activate, and I might wanna just try to take them out. So let's see what I have here. I have some power feedback armor. At the end of your turn before the first free action, deal one unblockable damage to an adjacent enemy for each damage card you have in your track. So I haven't taken any damage yet, so I don't really want to do that. And let's see. I have shock pulse emulator. Deal two damage to an enemy within three, and then push it one away from you. If the movement is stopped by anything, the enemy suffers another two. Hmm, well, that's not too bad. Uh, that's just gonna add farther a distance to it. And then I have the repeater rifle. So this is gonna deal four damage split among chosen enemies, all within four spaces. So, so he is one, two, three. So there, I could target those or I could split it between the two potentially. So that could be good. And then I'm going to take one unblockable damage to yourself. Well, I think that might be worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it's gonna deal four damage split among the chosen enemies. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do three to him. So that's gonna take care of that enemy there as he only has four hit point or three hit points. And I have one damage left. And if I do it to him, he's gonna block it with his shield. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it to that guy. So now he only has two hit points left. So from there, then I have to draw a damage card and it's a four, ooh, severe internal bleeding. So when drawn, place this card on the number four slot on your cooldown track. All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play with the, <laughs> the normal level so I won't have to deal with any of those effects. All right, so that is my first action. And my second action, do I have anything else here? Um, so my three slot is full, so interact with an object. Okay. So run and brace actually would be pretty good. Because it says, if this is your second action this turn, deal one unblockable damage to an adjacent enemy when you stop. So I think I will do that. So I'm going to go ahead and place that there. And it does have me rolling one die. So a shield would be good. Uh, it's not going to do me any good there. I could 
try to re-roll it once. Let's go ahead and do that. And it's still a plus one. So I'm going to go ahead and hold off there. Now let's move up to four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and four here. And then when I stop, I'm going to deal one to an enemy. So he's going to be eliminated because he it goes past his armor. And that is my turn. So then all of these are going to slide over one. Okay. Now at the beginning of my next turn, I do have a special ability that I'm going to gain a focus for every damage card in my track. So I would actually gain a focus back. And that's it. So now it is going to activate the enemies again. So it's just going to be the one guy. He's going to attack the nearest character, which he does not have line of sight to. And then he's going to move to the last activated character. So he's going to continue moving in here towards him. And that's going to move down one. And then it's going to kick back to my other character to go because they've both gone. Well, at this point, they've both gone. So these, these would be reset. And then again, I get to choose. So I could jump right back to the player that activated last and he could go again trying to work on that guy or I can jump back over to my other player to go. Well, I hope this gave you a good idea how the game plays. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them or swing by the Kickstarter's comment section and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creator would love to hear from you and is more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.